Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. It has finally come. We have seen the Duncan decision come down from Judge Benitez down in the Federal District Court of San Diego. To talk with us through it today, we have brought on CRPA Volunteer President Chuck Michelle. Chuck, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, this is a pleasure. This is uh, one of those, uh, unfortunately, rare, but becoming more increasingly common appearances where we can, can talk about a big, big win. Absolutely. But before we get into that today, I just want to remind you guys, it is helping. So please feel free, drop a like, drop a comment and share this video. It really helps with the algorithms. We're trying to get this breaking news out to as many people as possible so that they can understand the legal battle ahead. So uh, Chuck, why don't we just get right into it? We, we, we saw the decision today, but for those who don't, uh, who don't know, uh, about the Duncan case. Can you give us just the general, this is the case with its, uh, also with its course through the court system? Sure. Well, let me say, first of all, I'm coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I'm traveling today because I'm uh, speaking at the uh, Second Amendment Foundation's Gun Right Policy Conference tomorrow. And so this is going to be great news to uh, start that, uh, that, that, that meeting with. Uh, there's a couple of hundred people that are that are attending there, and so it's going to be uh, uh, big news tomorrow, and it'll get out across the country from there. I'm sure it's already being picked up by several of the uh, trade press. Uh, basically, Duncan is a challenge to California's ban on the possession of magazines that can hold over ten rounds, uh, and it, it's had a very long and uh, torturous path through the courts started in Judge Benitez's courtroom, I want to say like five years ago, uh, went up to the Ninth Circuit Court of, we won there that first time around using the Heller analysis, the analysis from the Supreme Court's case in Heller from 2008. Uh, that case went up to the Ninth Circuit to a three judge panel, and we won again in front of the three judge panel. And then the case as the Ninth Circuit uh, at least as it was previously composed, was inclined to do, took the case on bonk, which means it went before a the three-judge panel decision was reviewed by an 11-judge panel. And then and in, before the 11-judge panel, we lost in a split decision. Then we appealed it to the United States Supreme Court. And a whole bunch of other cases were stayed behind it as we waited for to see what the Supreme Court would do with Duncan. Uh, and then this, but the Supreme Court Duncan waited till they issued Bruin, then did what's called a GVR, a grant cert, vacate the lower court decision and remand it back to the Ninth Circuit for reconsideration in light of what they had said in Bruin. The Ninth Circuit then in turn remanded it back down again to the district court, that's Judge Benitez, to reconsider his previous ruling in light of Bruin. Now, since Bruin made things harder for the state to prove constitutionality of a gun control law than Heller did, or at least the way Heller was misinterpreted by many courts, uh, we have always thought that Judge Benitez would uh, basically once again rule that the magazine possession ban was unconstitutional as a Second Amendment violation. And that's what he did today. In a 71-page opinion, one of the most thorough, well-thought-out, well documented. I mean, he has more footnotes in this thing. Uh, you know, he is. He knows he's going to be appealed, and we know his decision is going to be appealed. And so he made the record uh, and dissected every one of the state's arguments, uh, but and and issued an injunction now the, against the uh, enforcement of the law banning the possession of magazines. Now he stayed that for ten days because he knows that the state is going to appeal it. This the Ninth Circuit will probably just stick with the status quo for now. And the status quo is that anybody who had these magazines before before the law was passed that the, the, the banned anyone from possessing them. In other words, the folks that are grandfathered in and the folks who bought magazines during Freedom Week, brought to you by CRPA after this first Duncan decision where they think hundreds of thousands of 10 plus round magazines were sold into the state of California. Obviously there was quite a bit of pent up demand. Uh, but so now this the most latest ruling uh, uh, will be is stayed so the state can 
ask the Ninth Circuit to preserve the status quo and keep and not uh, allow possession of of 10 plus round magazines until this, the Ninth Circuit rules. We'll oppose that, but and we did we, we did before too, but this, the Ninth Circuit will probably just keep things the way they were until they uh, issue a final ruling. So we'll be back in front of a three judge panel uh, now with uh, Judge Benitez's newest uh, enhanced analysis and uh, I think I'm very hopeful that we're going to win there. There's a huge argument, huge debate, huge internal conflict going on in the Ninth Circuit right now uh, about the proper approach to applying Bruin. Uh, the, the, the Tedder decision on, on butterfly knives out of Hawaii just came down and that three judge panel applied the Bruin test faithfully. Courts are trying very hard, some courts are trying very hard to kind of twist the Bruin analysis at the urging of uh, states and the, the the gun ban industry groups, you know, funded by Bloomberg and other billionaires that are behind them, uh, to try and water down the Bruin test and, and make it easier to find a statute to be constitutional. But so that that battle is going on, and Duncan will be part of it if it's not resolved by uh, the Teeter decision before then. But the bottom line is. We've got a great win, a great, well-reasoned opinion from Judge Benitez, and uh, we're on our way. We And CRPA will stick with it and fight this thing uh, uh, until the cows come home. We, we are not giving up. Uh, this is a scorched earth fight for all of our Second Amendment rights. We'll also be submitting this opinion in a number of other states that have tried to jump on the uh, gun control bandwagon uh, and pass all kinds of vindictive laws. Uh, retaliatory laws, frankly, to get back at the Supreme Court for their Bruin decision. A lot of states don't, well, not a lot, but the battleground states don't like that. And so they've uh, uh, tried to really contort the Bruin ruling so that, uh, and twist twist the Supreme Court's words. And Justice uh, Judge Benitez really set that straight, made it clear that, you know, the, the state's arguments were border on frivolous, to quote him. Well, I want to I want to retrace here because you did hit a couple of uh, pretty glaring questions that the firearms community had. I mean, I, I also kind of get the sense that I mean, this is just one of those lawsuits. It feels like it has the weight of the entire firearms community on its shoulders, um, you know, starting back in 2016, going from the federal court, district court to the Ninth Circuit, Ninth Circuit en banc. Uh, Supreme Court all the way back down to get ruled on by Judge Benitez again. You said that he's he stayed uh, his uh, preliminary injunction. So he did grant a preliminary injunction, which is why the firearms community can celebrate today. I mean, the, Judge Benitez and uh, I guess through the lens of the Bruin decision, this decision did not change. We got the injunction. The original injunction brought us Freedom Week. But uh, today he put a 10-day stay. So Tell me about that. Is that essentially saying the state has 10 days to appeal while also saying we're not getting another Freedom Week? The state had asked that the state last time around was kind of caught flat footed. They they didn't ask for uh, a stay as part of their motion. Uh, so when that stay, when, when the ruling went into effect the first time around, um, there was no stay in place. The state had to then asked the district court to stay and it declined to and then it had to ask the ninth circuit to stay and the ninth circuit did that's why between the time that the district court did not issue the stay and the ninth circuit did we had freedom week this time around the state knew that was coming and so asked for the stay from the district court in their in their motion papers rather than waiting for an opinion for the decision today they've already asked for that so the court knew that the Ninth Circuit would grant it anyway, most likely. And so it said, you, OK, you have 10 days to ask the Ninth Circuit to stay this ruling beyond beyond 10 days. So, I mean, at the point that we're shooting this, I, I guess I, I don't want to expect too much. The, the decision has literally been out for less than an hour. But, you know, one of the one of the questions that I've had and, and I've talked about with a lot of people is, is, is the scope going to 
how much is the scope going to change here? How much is Judge Benitez's decision, which I think the original decision on this case was something in the 80s. It was a 83 or 84 page decision. Um, now we see a 71 page decision from what you've seen so far. Uh, what is the difference in approach for him viewing this through the eyes of Bruin as opposed to Heller? Well, he had to look more at his historical laws. He had to, the Bruin, the Bruin test clarified what the Heller test really was supposed to be, but it got all twisted uh, between the 12 years between Heller and Bruin because states tortured the Heller language and some courts bought into that and got into this interest balancing test where you weigh the public's interest in public safety and the state's interest in regulating public safety against the individual right to keep and bear arms. And they, I won't get into the weeds too deep about how they distorted that test in Heller, but Bruin said, that's not what you do. You do not have this interest balancing states versus individual rights interest. You, you simply look at the language of the Second Amendment and you decide, is the conduct that's being uh, ba regulated, banned, uh, covered by the language of the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms? So semi-automatic rifles, magazines, whatever they are, those possessing those and using those is part of keeping or bearing arms. So that should be a simple test. They're already trying, the states are trying to twist that already. And then the second part is, okay, if it's covered by the Second Amendment's plain text, then is there a historical law, something that existed around the time of the drafting of the Second Amendment in 1791, that would give us an indication that the founders would have tolerated, the drafters of the Constitution, uh, of the Bill of Rights, they would have tolerated the modern day law, something that's roughly equivalent to the modern day law. That's an oversimplification, but I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. But the point is this. So to find out, to determine whether a a gun control law is constitutional or not, you have to look back at the history and tradition and see if the if there's any indication from a historical law that the founders would have tolerated the modern day law. So that's a test that you that wasn't done under Heller, but has to be now done under Bruin. So that was all done as part of Judge uh, Benitez's decision uh, in the, the latest decision. It's a new new kind of analysis that Bruin now requires. Well, yeah, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, all the nuances as, you know, the team of attorneys. And I mean, you get the chance to read it yourself uh, and can kind of cross examine the differences in, in the way that the decision was written. You also indicated that you expect uh, the state to appeal. So, I mean, technically right now, we don't know if the state's going to appeal. They have 10 days to do so. Um, something that I've noticed, I mean, specifically with our Boland case, uh, specifically also with the Junior Sport Magazine case, you know, when you put into context that this lawsuit was filed in 2016, uh, things seem to be moving a lot quicker uh, these days, or at least it seems like they do. Um, do you have any set of expectations if it does get appealed? I mean, it, it, are all of these uh, lawsuits, which these courts have already kind of viewed, but now have to view under Bruin, uh, do these timelines sort of speed up a little bit, or is it too tough to say? Uh, I wouldn't really say that they're speeding up. There are cases it, in different stages, and so some are further ahead than others. In the Ninth Circuit, you've got now Duncan. They will inevitably seek en banc review. You've got the, the Hawaii butterfly knife case, Teeter. You've got uh, our case, Bolin v. Bonta, the roster challenge. Uh, which was argued in front of a three-judge panel, but we don't have a ruling yet. You've got the great win that we just got last week in Junior Sports v. Bonta, but that's more of a First Amendment analysis than a Second Amendment analysis. It's about advertising for firearms rather than keeping or bearing one. Uh, but all of that stuff, there's this, there's still this battle going on about how, what the right way to interpret Bruin is, right way to apply the Bruin standard is. And, and that's going to have to be resolved. And that's going to be resolved fairly soon. And there's also, don't forget, the Rahimi case in the United States Supreme Court, which probably will set the record straight on some of that. So this is the division that you've got going on in the circuit courts, the courts of federal courts of appeal right now, between how do we apply Bruin? Uh, is there, are there some arms that aren't arms that aren't covered? You know, they're saying magazines aren't really arms. 
you know, what's the what does that textual uh, Second Amendment text really uh, cover? And then what type of historical analogs are acceptable and what aren't? What are relevant historical laws that would indicate that a modern law would be tolerated by the founders? That debate, most of that debate is going to be resolved fairly quickly. And once it is, I think then you're going to see a much faster uh, uh, pace on all of these cases across the country. By the way, keep in mind, the, the the cases that we're litigating in California, the the the, the states in response to Bruin have, have passed a lot of, of vindictive retaliatory laws, frankly, in many cases to try and overwhelm us. I mean, it's no secret in the halls of the Capitol in Sacramento that they want to pass so many laws that we can't possibly sue over all of them. And so that's resulted in a very unusual and, 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 uh, and great uh, kind of a coalition between most of the gun gun rights advocacy groups that are all now coming together and sharing the sharing the burden of the of the litigation. All the law firms are cooperating with each other, much much more so than they used to, and kind of coordinating their efforts. Even though there's still some where you get you know four lawsuits filed against the Illinois uh, magazine and semi auto ban. But the fact is. Uh, once that fundamental question is resolved by the Supreme Court or by a en banc panel in the Ninth Circuit or some other circuit, and they decide this is how you apply Bruin, all this other stuff is not how you apply Bruin. Once we get that locked in, it's a much simpler test. The state loses, doesn't have all these frivolous, you know, uh, hide the ball kind of distort things, arguments to make uh, to try and uh, justify a law. And let's not forget that the Second Amendment Law Center is in this mix now. And so now, D Duncan, on appeal, there's going to be a whole amicus brief campaign along with the merits briefs. And we will be uh, fighting like the third monkey on the ramp to, know, to Noah's Ark uh, to, to, to hold on to this win and, uh, and restore our rights in California, which we've been, which have been taken away from us for the last decade or so uh, by folks who want to murder the gun culture and, and get rid of guns entirely. Well, as these things uh, continue to unfold in the courts, certainly uh, after more analysis of uh, this specific decision is done, I certainly invite you back and look forward to having you on so that we can talk about that. On this win, though, at first glance, any final thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, th yes, this is a f fantastic, hard-fought, scorched-earth long in coming win uh, that we will make the most of and not just for magazines. Remember, it's, you know, in Heller, it was about handguns in the home and Bruin, it was about handguns, uh, license to get hand on, to possess a handgun in public for self-defense. Now we're talking about magazines. In the Teeter case, it was butterfly knives. The specific issue that's being litigated is not it's, it's well, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's as important, but the, the things that really come out of these cases is the methodology. How do you decide whether these things are unconstitutional or not? And that's what, once it's nailed down, is going to be able to be applied across the board. So not only is Duncan seeking to uh, protect our right to possess the most effective tools for self-defense, or target shooting for that matter, uh, it's also nailing down this, this methodology. And in a sense, Judge Benitez's decision today in nailing down that methodology gave us more to use than just a magazine case. It's, it could, the, the methodology can be applied in any kind of case. And, and don't forget in San Diego, there's those other three cases pending, the Billy Club case, the semi-auto ban, which we also have the CRPA companion case in RUP, and then the, um, the other one. And Rody, Rody ammunition, yeah, the Rody uh, CRPA's Rody case. So we may see now that Judge Benitez has uh, issued one, we may see more coming fairly quickly. There's still a brief due in Rody, so that won't be coming until after we get that final brief filed. But uh, I think these are going to come fast now. Well, we certainly look forward to uh, seeing. Uh, what more is to come and discussing it on this channel. Chuck, I want to thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to be with us today. 
My pleasure, guys. Thanks for getting the word out. And hey, keep the faith, folks. We are going to win this fight. Do not give up hope. It takes a while, but it will get done. And then for ourselves and for our children and their children, uh, we will protect uh, the freedoms that the Second Amendment guarantees. Absolutely. Thank you again. So if you like these videos and you want to see more content like this, please be sure, like, share, and subscribe to these uh, videos and to this channel. It really helps get the word out there. We want to get this information to as many people as we can. The 2024 elections are coming up, and the Second Amendment needs to be a priority because that is our first line of defense. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.